Hey guys, what's up? Austin Smith here with a review of this set, Calligraphy the Easy Way. Uh, the outside is alright. Everything looks nice. You got the sort of uh, stock photography, you got a list of what's inside. Everything looks uh, everything looks good. Uh, the back is a little bit sparse. Some of these things tend to uh, to be a little more heavily laden with, uh, with stuff. Uh, but still, whatever. Uh, this is, I believe, usually uh, 20 30 bucks, something like that. Uh, this I got at Sam's for 10 as you can see. You open it up, it's got a magnetic closure here, and you open it, and you've got a book over here that you can't see because, uh, there we go. We'll just slide that book right out. Got a book that is a, uh, about calligraphy, which we'll come back to in a second. Uh, that's just the same thing as the cover, isn't it? Yes. So we'll put that off to the side. Uh, and then you have the uh, this workbook here, workbook and practice pad, which um, I assume is supposed to be attached, but isn't, because uh, the glue just came off. And actually, I picked this up in the store, and uh, the workbook just fell out. So, uh, great indication of uh, quality. And there you've got... 120 grams per square meter art paper. That's actually probably pretty good. Uh, 190 millimeter by 255 millimeter cards and tags and practice sheets. So you've got uh, at the front here. You've got the the one alphabet they have. You can practice that uh, on the, the paper. And then you've got a couple blank sheets of paper. And then at the back here, you've got you got a bunch of more blank sheets of paper. And in the back here, you've got like some uh, some cards. And then you got like t tags and stuff. And, you can do all that sort of stuff. Also, here's a uh, reading instructions before using your calligraphy pens. Bonus classic stylus. Look at that in a second. And then up at the top here, we have this little door that was uh, covered by scotch tape or sellotape or whatever. And then we open this up and we get this cheap little plastic tray with some uh, so the pens in it. And then there's this, which is uh, just a refill guide, I think. Read these instructions before refilling your pen. There we go. It's exactly how to use your pen. That's enough time for you to read that. Okay. Actually, that is a uh, that's a bit strange. Anyway, you uh, take this off. This is also taped on, and you get the uh, the materials that are actually provided. This is you get a terrible squeaking sound when you accidentally move it wrong. Uh, this is probably the most expensive part of the set, uh, like I say, $20, $30 uh, usually. So you get a bonus, uh, classic stylus as they call it, it's just a, a dip nib pen. You get a brush, a number one brush, very teeny tiny brush. Um, might use that for painting miniatures even, um, in some cases. Uh, you get a calligraphy pen. Rather an italic pen. Got uh, four cartridges in black, blue, red, and green. I've I don't know why they give red and green. Seems always with calligraphy stuff. I have never found calligraphy in those colors attractive. But hey, that's just me. And then you get this, which is basically like oil paint. Yellow ochre. Actually, it might not be like oil paint. I'll need to look that up. But you get this crap. Uh, you get yellow ochre and Prussian blue, which are weird colors, in my opinion. I should mention that I'm not going to be covering these, or the brush, uh, for the simple reason that they don't tell you how to use them. So we'll go grab the, uh, grab the calligraphy book back here, and uh, it gives you a, an introduction into calligraphy. A very basic introduction, as you can see by the giant font. Um, and then it tells you the basics, and the basics it tells you for a pen. It gives you equipment here. See equipment. It lists the brush. It talks to you about the brush here, or it doesn't list the brush, but it shows you the brush. But then it just talks to you about the pen. That that one calligraphy pen you got. Doesn't doesn't talk to you about the stylus. Doesn't talk to you about the brush. Just doesn't mention it. And then it tells you how to do this one font. You get exactly one font, Chancery, right there. So you can you can make chancery. Uh, hopefully by the end of this book. 
with your calligraphy pen. And you got spacing details and then some projects so you can make your note cards and your bottle tags and whatever. All sorts of stuff. Design templates that you'll never... I don't know how those are supposed to be used either. I don't think they explain that particularly well. So yeah, great book, right? It's actually, it's fairly nice quality. I, I respect that. And uh, you can just put it on your shelf like that and it's easy. Uh, if you want to learn how to write chancery. That's about all it does. So I, don't, I would consider it uh, actually part of the review even to cover this uh, gosh and um, the uh, the brush because it's it's not included in the set really uh, which is weird in my opinion <laughs> and uh, we've got this uh, this stylus that isn't also included it does flex uh, I don't know if you can see that Let's see Let's see if I can make it flex a little bit for you it does flex. Uh, there's no ink reservoir, so it'll run out of ink pretty fast. But uh, it works. Whatever. I'm sure that's actually going to be... That's actually alright. I mean, it's pretty scratchy, but a lot of dip nibs are scratchy. But it's not... It's not... Not very scratchy, and it's not like eating the paper or anything. But I think to review it, all we really have to do is review the pen. Because that's... That's what it, that's what it came with. Uh, and I think the review can pretty much be summed up with this, where I, I open it up and uh, there's some rust right there, uh, if it focuses. Uh, that is that is rust right there on the pen. I believe so. There's also no markings on the nib. I lied, that's an M. I just, I, I'm blind. There's an M on the nib, so that's a medium italic. This is standard international. Let's well, I'll wash this nib off and fill it in a second. Let's see if it. Nope, it appears to be quite stuck in there. So I'm gonna. There's room for two cartridges. Oh, no eyedropper fill. Unfortunately, right. I made it this uh, interesting sort of feeling plastic there. This is rubbery. This is actually pretty nice. It clicks pretty nice as long as the cap doesn't doesn't break. I like this uh, cap design too. And the uh, the pen. It's pretty sharp up there. It's a little mold mold bit right there that's kind of sharp. So yeah. I like the design. I wouldn't uh, like it to carry it around but I, I like I think it's interesting. So let's uh, wash that rust off or scrape the rust off and uh, come back in just a second. So I have separated with some difficulty one of their, uh, their practice sheets from the, the pad uh, just so that it makes it easier to film. I've also got a Clairefontaine sheet over here and you know if this pen performs well it could probably uh, almost save the, the $10 version of the set or it prob I would say it saves the $10 version of the set actually uh, it might almost save the uh, 20 or $30 version of the set so we plug the cartridge in there and that I don't know what just happened. Hmm. Okay, there we go. No. 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 Alright, well, so ink is definitely flowing somewhere. Let's, uh, let's grab it. <laughs> Let's grab another cartridge and see if we can shove it in the barrel to prevent this uh, this cartridge from running away with it. Uh, from just coming loose. Alright, let's see. Shut the shut the thing. Rattles in there. That's not good. Um, spend a couple seconds. I wash. Put some water on it. So right now it's writing with water. Oh, there's some black coming through. It's actually not... not unsmooth. Let's give it a little bit, give it a bit. Maybe I should be testing this on something that isn't their... super fantastic uh, paper. Is that the black? It doesn't seem to be... Is there, it's still getting darker. Never mind. Alright, well, let's actually. I mean, if I were to just write with this, 
Whoa. It just... It, it, it glides. I don't know if that's just the water I put in, or if that's the actual property of the ink. But it's, uh, it's just gliding. That's nice. Uh, let's see if I can do... my name. You're not getting a great angle of this. That's actually not that bad. Uh, it, there's a little bit of bleed through in the paper there. Don't know if you can see that. Alright, this hasn't, isn't how you're supposed to use this paper, but whatever. I'll use it on the side. And the ink is just flowing. That's interesting. Um, what other words can we write? Uh, Texas. Because Austin is a city in Texas. It doesn't want to do crisp italic things. It really is not not particular. Uh, you can't see that at all. It really isn't crisp. Not not particularly crisp. Um, a quick brown fox. Wow, it's just gushing ink, except when it skips. That was my fault, by the way. Jump. Over. That is, that's just gushing ink out on the page, and this at this point is is definitely not affected by the water that I put in there. Uh, it's bleeding through a little bit on the Clairefontaine. That is a that is a that is an ink right there. So let's go to the pen and see if we've uh, done any damage. It's actually holding. I uh, I wouldn't trust it. But it's, I mean, it's in there, right? Um, yeah. Interesting. Um, I'll, I'll use this a little bit more and let you know how it holds up. <laughs> Quick little bonus, we got some speedball ink here. Speedball super black. Yeah. Eventually it opens. Sealed for your protection, obviously. Now, let's take these stylus. Look, look, look. Dip it in. Alright, see if we can write something. There's a tripod right here, right, right there. So it's hard for me to, uh, to. Wow. That just pours ink. There's wow. All right, let me, let me blot that <laughs> real quick. Uh. Look. Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> the answer to is that a good pen? Uh, is no. Um. I've used dip pens before. That was a. Uh, that was not great. All right, so I'm back. The uh, pen has gone through some testing. I will admit it is not as rigorous a testing as I usually do for pens, because this is a uh, supposedly calligraphy pen, and you probably don't just carry those around with you in your pocket or whatever. So I don't think it needs to be as rigorously tested. Also. I feel that if I were to do that, it would uh, it would break this uh, um, cap. While good enough, would probably crack, and this clip, while also good enough, uh, and could probably could probably take the wear. But if you put it on something thicker, I have a feeling it would snap as well. So how does it do? It's a uh, it's all right. I will admit that while I said the cartridge was in there very loosely, it has not shaken out yet. So that is a plus. So if I were to put this on like this and shake it, get some ink in the cap. That was, some of that was already there, but some of it 
just popped in a lot of nib creep there. Um, it just ink likes to fly everywhere on this pen. It's sort of leaky, but the cartridge didn't fall out. So it's not as bad there as I said it was. Um, but take a piece of rhodia paper here, uh, and if we'll just uh, write an S to illustrate my point. This is a gothic S, and I know chancery and gothic are not the same font, but this illustrates the uh, the point. I tried to write with the chancery, and I'm bad at chancery in the first place because uh, I don't practice it very often. Uh, but with this pen, it's nearly impossible. For the same reason, it's nearly impossible to do uh, pretend gothic there, because as you can see, it's nice and rounded. Which you might also notice is not what you want in most types of calligraphy. Um, chancery and the gothic included. Also, it bleeds through rhodia paper. Well, that's not bleed through, uh, but if you, that was not on the paper for very long, and it showed through pretty significantly there. Uh, you can see just tiny dots of bleed through. Uh, it bleeds through Clairefontaine, it bleeds through rhodia, it bleeds through Leuchtturm. Uh, I don't know why it wouldn't if it bled through Clairefontaine, but uh, just all the good quality papers that you standardly would think of for using with fountain pens just bleeds right through them. So I actually have to command the paper that came with the set uh, a little bit more than I was previously because that paper at the very least actually um, held the ink there. Let's see if we can uh, scribble another S on it very quickly. It just dumps ink and it does not have any definition to the line. The italic point there is very, very rounded off. So there's no, there's none of those hard edges that are super nice in calligraphy. Oh, nope, it's bleeding through there. So, I mean, the paper that it comes with is, is fairly good quality still, uh, even with that. Um, and I have some other pens up here that you can barely notice I wrote with. Uh, uh, you can't. Uh, there we go. Sort of. It's out of focus. Focus. So you can't even see that. You can sort of kind of see that there. There we go. Uh, so it the paper is very good. The pen is eh. It just it doesn't do the calligraphy thing very well. And if you were, I mean, I can see it as sort of a if you want a nice big, a nice fat italic uh, to write with, just cursive or whatever. Uh, it is all right. Hello. See, it, it, it looks it looks nice. It doesn't look terrible. It bleeds through still, even that fast. Um, it is not uh, not great for um, calligraphy like it's meant, uh, at least in the set, it's meant to be used for. And carrying around, I just feel like it would explode. And as you can see, every time I click the cap on, it's just splattering ink on the inside there. So that's not that's not nice either. The pen isn't made for carrying around, the nib isn't made for calligraphy, I don't know what it's for. And it is a fault of the ink uh, that it's bleeding through these papers, not the pen, obviously. So maybe with a less aggressive ink, it would be, it would feather less? It feathers on uh, Clairefontaine, it feathers, it doesn't really feather on this rodeo, you can't really tell. But it feathers on, there you go, a little bit of feathering there, you can see. But yeah, it feathers on virtually everything. So this ink that they include is not a good calligraphy ink. Um, the pen is not a good calligraphy pen. I don't really know what they were going for. It's an alright pen. It's pretty good paper. Uh, if you want to learn chancery, uh, it is an alright book. And maybe a little bit about the history of calligraphy. And some very nice pictures. I mean, the pictures aren't bad. I like the, the photos. Um, so, they... It, those three things are all right, and they're worth the ten dollars, but they're not good. Like they, they, they're ten dollars worth of stuff, but I would much rather have had them. Those three things be twenty dollars worth of stuff, and have none of the rest of it. I paid ten dollars. If you paid twenty or thirty, it's it's not worth it. The uh, the other tools, the stylus, which I could just not know how to use, but it just dumps ink on the page, and if I don't know how to use it. Uh, if I can't use it, it shouldn't be in a beginner kit, especially without instructions. Maybe you can have a beginner stylus kit, of course, there's got to be some beginner stylus kits, but it should have instructions. There's no instructions, it's just given to you. There's no ink for it, so that's that's poorly thought out in my opinion. The brush and the uh, 
basically paint, aren't useful either. They're just, they're, they're given to you without instruction, and I think that's a, a poor way to do it. I think they should have focused on just the pen, the paper, and the, the instructions, made that $20 worth of stuff, not just increase the price of this $10 worth of stuff, and made it, made it work. It could have been good. Uh, as for now, you get an, a yeah, pen that, you know, is just interesting to have, that sometimes comes rusty. Uh, a meh book, a meh calligraphy book that I have better of already for much less. An interesting magnetic box with a bunch of crap inside of it. And an alright calligraphy practice pad. This was not worth ten dollars and it's the only thing that I, uh, that I think works well out of it. So I would not recommend this. Uh, I can't can't say it's a good calligraphy product. A basic Schaefer viewpoint is probably better even though those still aren't the best thing to learn calligraphy on, they're, they're better than this, even for the same price. And there's, of course, like a Kobeko uh, Sport, actually, has calligraphy nibs, and those would probably be great. I haven't used those, uh, but Kobeko Sports work well. So there, there's a bunch of calligraphy options, and this is just sort of uh, a cash-in type thing on, oh, people want to learn calligraphy now, let's show them. And uh, it's not, not great. Thank you. Bye.